Hey guys, it's Dwayne Huff, author of the book, Write Your Own Ticket, and I hope you've had a phenomenal week. But more importantly, I hope that you've taken some time this week to make one more step, or several more steps towards your goal, your vision, or your dream. You know the philosophy behind Write Your Own Ticket if you read my book. If you haven't, by the way, um, run over to writeyourownticketacademy.com, grab a copy of that, and you'll, you'll know exactly where I'm coming from. But um, the whole philosophy is about taking what you're passionate about and doing what you love on your own terms. Uh, and to do that, many times it has to be in an entrepreneurial venture, a side hustle, a full-time business, maybe even a dream job, depending on what that is. But uh, uh, staying in the same place, doing the same work that you're not happy about, not fulfilled with, is not the way to go anymore. And uh, I just want to encourage you today that you know the first step is the hardest one to take, right? But today, it, it's there's never been a better time. You know, I don't care how old you are, how young you are. I don't care if you're just graduating college or if you just retired. It's time to write your own ticket. It's time to do um, what it is that you've always wanted to do or recently have found a passion for. And um, forgive me, I'm, I'm out here. This is unrehearsed, unplanned, and apparently my neighbor wants to cut his grass, so there's going to be some noise in the background. Hopefully that won't interfere with what I'm going to share with you today. Um, you know, I look back, if, if you know my story, um, 10 years ago I stepped out of a full-time corporate job with benefits, company car, the whole nine, and uh, with one client, stepped out with a promise of six months of work on a contract, and after that, nothing. But that ended up turning into a two-year relationship, and then uh, here we are 10 years later, because I took the risk, uh, I took that step, you know. Um, but the write your own ticket philosophy is not about taking risk, and it's not about going into business for yourself, and going uh, all in financially, and mortgaging your house, and, and taking out a big loan. In fact, I always quote Mark Cuban when Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks and billionaire entrepreneur says, if you take out a loan to go into business, you're a fool. And he's absolutely right. In this day and age, it's not necessary. What's necessary is a vision, a passion, a goal, a dream, and a group of people to serve. Um, but before we do this, and this is the very first thing I teach, because it, it was the thing that really helped me. You know, I, I say 10 years ago, I stepped out uh, on my own and started pursuing my business on a risk, but it started years before that. I think four and a half years before I actually stepped off was when I took the first step. Um, and the first step is getting crystal clear on what it is that you want. Uh, and I believe that our past tells us about our future. And for me, there were defining moments in my life that kind of pointed me in the direction that I am today, and it was whenever I was 15 years old, I saw a leadership speaker for the first time. And in that moment, I was like, you know, I don't know, my parents are telling me I have to find something to do with my life when I graduate. I don't know what that is. I'm scared there's no answer for me. But then I saw this leadership speaker, and in my mind I said, wait a minute, this dude's getting paid to run his mouth <laughs> and draw pictures. I'm pretty sure I can do that. And I didn't know if I could, right? So I took that dream, put it up on the shelf, and it took me 15 years to even try to start pursuing it. And uh, when I started pursuing it, I got some wonderful advice from two people. One of them was Donnie Deutsch of the Deutsch Agency, Advertising Agency, Madison Avenue. Um, and he said, look, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you're excited about, if you have a product, if you have a service, if you have an idea, go out there and serve 10 people with that idea for free. Take the feedback, iterate, get social proof, build a portfolio, and on the 11th person, charge. Now, he said 10 and on the 11th, so 10 and 1, but... Uh, depending on where you are in your journey, it could be one and two, or it could be 20 and five. I don't know where the numbers are going to be for you, but getting started by going out and serving. Um, the second piece of advice I, gave, I got came from a man named Max John, who is the owner uh, and entrepreneur of the first pharmaceutical company that I worked for. And he said, Dwayne, I, here's what I do. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm an opportunist. He says, I look at the marketplace and I can divide it into sections. And I look at those sections and I see where's the market being underserved or not served at all. And I go there and I create a, a product, a service, or an idea. We sell as much of it as we possibly can. And then when it, if it runs its course, we go and look at a different segment. So I took those two concepts and that's where I started my speaking uh, career. And uh, in that, I tell the story about the first person that I reached out to and said, hey, look, here's what I'm trying to accomplish. Do you know anybody? And she said, well, you know, my company doesn't have a training department. Could you come teach us some of the stuff that you know? That turned into my first paid speaking engagement, my second 
excuse me, paid speaking engagement, my third paid speaking engagement, all because I opened my mouth, I connected with somebody who knew me, liked me, and trust me, and I was able to take that first step. The problem was, is I stopped taking the steps. I stopped going. So why I tell you this is, you, the first thing you wanna do is get clear on what it is you want. Maybe it was something that happened in your past. Maybe it's something you're passionate about. Maybe it's something you've seen that there's a gap in the marketplace that needs to be served. Or maybe you've heard people say, you know, I'd really, really like to have this. And so get clear on what it is that you want to produce, what it is you want to do, what, what space you wanna own and how you wanna serve people. And the second step is to commit. Even before you know how, in fact, I believe that you're never going to really understand or know how until you make that first step of getting clear and then committing. Because I believe, I believe the universe, I believe God, I believe life will hide the ball from you until it knows that you're serious. So first, get clear on the vision. Second, commit. Third, persevere. There's going to be challenges. You're going to fail. You're going to fail, and, and this is the whole plight of an entrepreneur. You're going to fail over and over and over and over and over and over and then succeed. So you got to get that failure out of the way fast and up front. Just realize it as part of the process, but realize it's not you sitting here, success over here, failure over here. So if you start going in this direction and it doesn't happen, oh, I'm going in the wrong direction. Like they say in the book, go for no, you're here, failure's here, success is there. There's no way to failure. I'm sorry, there's no way to success except through failure, so accept that. And that perseverance is what it's going to take. But um, somebody, one of my mentors said this to me one time, and I think it stands uh, in this place really important um, to realize that that failure is part of the process, but the vision is not gonna change, and the commitment is not gonna change, it's the perseverance that's gonna change. And here's what he said, he said, always remember that the goal is in concrete, but the plan is in sand. And for me, what happened, just to illustrate the point for you, is that I was really clear on what I wanted to do. I wanted to speak. I wanted to inspire people with the spoken word. And I wanted to make my living running my mouth and drawing pictures. And for the last 10 years, that's exactly what I've done. And I make a full-time income on a part-time basis. If I told you my schedule, it would make you nauseous. Compared to the income I make, this has been my best year so far in business. In the beginning of the year, it looked desolate. So you never know when things are going to change. But um, the goal, the vision, um, when I first started speaking was to come back and speak to students. And uh, so I started going in that direction. Met with a little success, but it looked like every time I would step in that direction, something would open up in the corporate world. But I didn't want to acknowledge that. And I kept on beating my head up against this student wall while the corporate opportunities kept opening up. Ultimately, what I came to the realization, I had a talk with a, a buddy of mine who was in the speaking business, and he said, Dwayne, what's the ultimate goal? Is it to talk to kids, or is it to speak for a living and do something you enjoy? And what I had to realize is I had to let go of how I saw the vision playing out because it was stopping me from getting the greater joy, the greater blessing of being able to make a living doing what I love. And look, I love to talk to students, and I get to talk to students every year. During the summer, I travel the country talking to high school students on leadership. I get to do some of that at the college level too, and the bulk of my business comes from working with uh, education professionals and business professionals. And you know what? I love to do it, but the goal was in concrete, the plan was in sand, and I had to be open to the possibilities and the iterations that came as a result of trying and failing. So again, get clear on what you want. Make the commitment to it and persevere, realizing you're gonna face a lot of setback, a lot of iteration, a lot of what seems like failure, but if you keep going, you learn in the process. And that's how you write your own ticket. That's the overview. So again, if you haven't got my book, uh, and if you're watching this, drop a comment below. I'll send you a link where you can get that, or run over to writeyourownticketacademy.com. You can grab that. And I've got some free training for you. If I'm not mistaken, I've got over ooh, three hours a free training for you uh, and, uh, uh, when you grab that book. So uh, um, this is Dwayne Huff with Write Your Own Ticket. Remember, you can write your own ticket. Live life on your own terms. You just got to be willing to make a commitment around a vision and persevere until it happens. And here's what's going to happen. I tell students this all the time. Here's a promise I'll make to you. Once you get focused on that vision and you just start going for it relentlessly and refuse to quit, one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to hit the goal that you originally set or on the journey, a door is going to open that you never even suspected was there and it's going to open the possibilities to you. And when you go in that direction, 
it's going to change the game for you and put you where you need to be. I'll give you a perfect example. When I go out and uh, train uh, adults and students, to be honest with you, um, one of the things they love the most is when I teach behavioral styles. And they come back to me and say, oh my God, you should teach that to parents. You should teach that to people who are getting married. You should teach that to students, uh, to teachers. And by listening to what the market is saying, I've made those adjustments. And so my work has become more consistent because I'm meeting people where they are and giving them what they want. And the basics of any business is simply this. Listen to what the market is telling you. Don't be so rigid and tight on what you think you want to give them, but be open to the feedback that comes back at you. And if you'll iterate, a change just and serve the marketplace, it'll put you where you need to be. For me, my journey looked like this. This whole speaking thing wasn't my passion at first. I started out playing the saxophone when I was 11 years old. Fell in love with music, stayed in the band. Even when times got tough, at the end of my freshman year, my um, band director sent me off to a drum major camp or a leadership camp, and that's what changed the game for me. So my passion, my love was music, but on that journey, it opened the door to something that is far greater than that music experience. Still play music to this day, <laughs> though I need to go practice my horn because it's been a while, but it opened the door to this. And when I stepped off to do this, a lot of changes happened, the ups, the downs, but I never had to go into debt to build my business. Actually this year, I had to stretch a little bit, um, but didn't really go into debt. I have a business line of credit and uh, had a client and um, they, I, they were paying me after services were rendered because we were on a grant. And uh, so I had to carry a, a large sum of money for about six months and it was scary. But it wasn't a huge risk because I knew the money was coming and I knew I had the resources. And every step we take on our journey, there's going to be, as Joyce Meyer likes to say, new level, new devil. And uh, they're only there to make us stronger, right? And we have to grow into business instead of just going into business, as my mentor Josh Shipp likes to say. And uh, it's out there for you. So I just want to shoot this video and ask you to consider, what did you do this week to get closer to your dream, your vision, or your goal and what will you do this weekend and in the weeks to come because the longer you wait the further off it gets and you know I heard somebody else say the other day that you know whenever uh, God plants a vision uh, in one person he plants it in another person in case the first person doesn't go in the direction and, I, and I'll guarantee you this if you're thinking I don't know if my idea is viable I don't know if I can make a living I don't know if it's a good business idea I don't know if people would buy it do a little Google search and I'm going to guarantee you're going to find at least 10 people who are already doing successfully what you're just thinking about doing and have been thinking about for the last one, two, three, ten 10 years and still haven't pulled the trigger. I'd like to be your guide on this journey and my book, Write Your Own Ticket, can help you. And uh, if you run over to writeyourownticketacademy.com, you can pick up a copy of that book for $5.60 and quite honestly, if you're not willing to invest $5.60 in yourself, then... I don't think myself or anyone else can help you because you're making excuses. But if you'll take that journey and get the free training that comes with it, you'll be off to the races. You'll have more information than you need. And then uh, once you do that, connect with me, let me know. And I'll be there to guide you and help you along the way because I want to hear about your success. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Remember, write your own ticket. Put your flag in the ground. Make the decision and take that first step today if you haven't already. If you need anything, uh, leave a comment, ask a question, or shoot me a message. I'm glad to serve. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.